fade up slowly and then it just like comes up really slowly with the intro music and then all of a sudden it's just like hey there welcome to the lord to death podcast my name's brett and i'm here with my good buddy <laughs> dj or rival x reviews if you want to give yourself a little introduction howdy howdy yeah thank you so much brett yeah no i'm happy to be here obviously long time listener long time fan I'm happy to be here. Uh, yeah. So yeah, like you just said before, uh, I have a, I guess you'll, you'd call it like kind of like an anime review slash recommendations podcast where I just talk for a little bit about anything that I really feel like talking about. I know that uh, I'm kind of starting off, so to speak. So a lot of my introduction stuff was like kind of, you know, to give a perspective of how I feel about anime and what are my favorites so maybe you know if we're kind of on the same wavelength maybe you'd actually enjoy listening to it like uh and then like you know i then usually try to pick like a topic so like the last one i just did was you know like a halfway point of everything that uh is playing this season and kind of my thoughts on it and yeah so it's pretty much just uh that's why my 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 uh my description is pretty brief anytime you search up my podcast just a guy talk about anime <laughs> yeah and i'm like the exact same way where it's just like i cover just like the broadest spectrum of things so it's just like how do i describe myself in like a paragraph or a sentence like not even a paragraph but like a sentence and i find it's kind of hard but like i like that your podcast is so broad because as someone who used to watch a lot of anime and is kind of coming back into the anime scene uh, it's really useful for me to listen to the episodes because I hear a lot of things that I probably wouldn't have heard of on my own because I'm not like up on every season. Like I'm not like paying attention to what's coming out. Um, so it's really cool to like find new shows and kind of like start watching them week to week. So I love well, listening for that. Hey, I'm, I'm glad that I have more than one listener because this kind of all started with one of my buddies just saying, hey, you know what you should do a podcast about anime because I love every time you give your opinion. And I'm like, OK. And then it turns out other people also like listening to it. <laughs> so it's always uh, good when someone likes your opinion. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. And uh, kind of like what brought me to the idea of, I guess, what we're going to talk about today, if the title doesn't give it away. But, uh, you know, I, I find very clearly that uh, any kind of JRPG hits the the fine line of what my uh, my expertise is in, in uh, definitely in the realm of anime, of all things. And I guess that segues really nicely into the topic, which, <laughs> like you said, it's in the description or it's in the title. So it's not like it's a surprise to anyone. but um. Today, I've got DJ on to talk about the Persona series. And so specifically, good. I wanted to talk about what th makes the Persona series so appealing and so interesting. Um, because I know that before Persona 5, from my understanding, and you know more about Persona than I do, because you're playing through 3, you've played 4, you've played 5. Persona 5 really brought Persona to the mainstream, I guess, kind of. Like, I guess it kind of got big with 4. But five is what really brought it out. And I was wondering kind of what about Persona 5 and about what about the Persona series in general kind of makes it so interesting. And so that's what I wanted to talk about today. And I figured I'd have you on because, again, you're playing through three. I haven't played three yet. Um, so I thought you'd be a great resource. Oh, well, I appreciate it. And yeah, no, definitely. And the funny part is the, the way that you say that I've done this in the complete opposite way that somebody definitely should, because I was also um, I played five and then I've basically not on purpose played backwards um so like then i played Pers persona 4 golden and then i played persona 3 reload um from what my understanding is persona 3 reload is definitely definitely takes some uh influence from persona 5 i think what atlas did is uh they saw hey we have a pretty good winning formula here let's uh let's let's put it back to the old psp games and see if we can make a mint and boy did they Wow, they really hit it out of the park. Um, yeah, but I guess essentially I think what makes it really nice and, and really, really like profound in the way, especially like in terms of like other JRPGs. And this is my only per my personal opinion is that I I love a good story. And I also love the fact that it's almost as if like I'm playing in an anime. And I know that sounds yeah. weird, but it's like literally like. There's a very good balance between almost like a your re like if you're if you're a fan of reading a slice of life anime where like you know you just put yourself in the shoes of like a you know 
a high school student in Japan just going about their normal every day, their social scenes and everything else like that. But then you also bring in like this very obviously kind of out of this world sub into the subconscious fantasy realm and they just smack it perfectly in between the two and it just it hits it hits that mark where like you almost feel like you're in your own i guess personal isekai which is probably the best way that i can put it it's almost like you're like i find that i didn't even realize that i put i think my first playthrough of persona 5 was like 130 hours or something like that and i didn't even realize that i put in 130 hours yeah like I remember like I'd I'd go and save and uh, I'd like look at it. I'm like, oh, God, I'm like, I just well, I played it like during lockdown. Um, So I had like literally nothing else to do. But I'm like, damn, I really just played that for seven and a half hours straight and like forgot to eat. <laughs> like it really sucks you in in a way that like very few games that I've played really do. And I think that is because it's so real almost just because of like the social connections and everything else but before we get too far into that sure. um i really wanted to just like the first things first this is what i want to do for every guest that comes on this podcast is i just want to ask because the topic of my podcast is lore and everything lore related and so i'm curious what you think how important is it to have like deep lore or good lore in media that you consume, whether it's like games that you play or movies that you watch or like comics, manga, anime, um, like how important is it to you that there's like a good amount of story or like depth to it? Or does it matter if it's shallow or not? I think it kind of depends. Like I I, I wouldn't say because I have watched a, and read a lot of garbage manga and anime. I for sure 100 percent. And I would definitely put that as like shallow in a sense. But When I was thinking about, because like I like to think about it, obviously, like the lore and everything else and all of your episodes and everything else like that, because of how in depth it goes into almost like the history and everything else that that comes along with whatever subject matter you choose for that week. I think the biggest thing for me is that very thorough understanding of of almost kind of like you, you know, where you're coming from. It's like the origins. It's it's like it's it's very. Mm -hmm. And I find that, like, I guess the most mainstream example that I can think of is, like, you know, I know you're a huge Star Wars fan, so I'm sure I'm going to embarrass myself when I when I when I'm talking about this. But, like, you know, kind of thinking back, like you watch the the original three that came out in like the 70s, 80s. And like, you know, you know, Darth Darth Vader's the bad guy and you know everything else. And then, you know, you you skip to 20 years later and you get to find out why Vader is Vader. You know what I mean? And I think that that in itself is an important is important just to kind of like give like a a mainstream example. But if I was giving it to like, say, Persona, you know, you go all the way back to the mythos kind of of, you know, the essentially what the whole premise of the universe that that uh, started the Persona games is two gods, Philemon and Nih- oh man i i it's I, I know exactly Totep what you're talking about or whatever yeah and it's basically like, yeah. the entire premise of the whole game and universe is they made a bet and the bet is which part of your psyche would win in a fight and which one would win <laughs> is the, the good, good side or the bad, or the bad. and and then here here we have the persona universe you know what i mean so i think to kind of give the under like obviously i think even if you don't go f- as far back in like the persona games you you kind of get the semblance of that's exactly what it is it's the fight of good versus evil and that is the same kind of general i guess topic that every single game tackles but they tackle them in their own different ways so i think kind of going back to what the origin of the original idea of the fight or the reasoning as to why things like, you know, the Velvet Room exist and why the multiverse is what it is and everything else like that, it all goes back to that bet. And I feel like that that in itself is a very important thing that you need to take into account because you (laughs) the main character is going through all of this terrible things because of two gods. Just basically essentially just made an off yeah, exactly. An (laughs) off the cuff bet. (laughs) <laughs> and when you look at it that way you're just like man those guys are assholes man, 
These guys <laughs> suck. <laughs> they <laughs> really do. <laughs> yeah. I want to say, like, you were trying to remember what, the, like, the one god was. And, like, my brain immediately went to... Because I know that it, like, the Persona series takes a lot from, like, mythology and mm-hmm. just, like, pop culture in general. Mm-hmm. Um, especially with, like, the names of the Personas and all that. And it reminded me of, like, there's, um, in H.P. Lovecraft's stories, um, there's one uh, character called Nyarlathotep. And I want to say that might actually that be That is exa- actually, I think, exactly yeah. what it is. Because it's like, <laughs> Nyarlathotep is basically just like an evil god who's just like inexplicably just like, kind of like just fucks with people. Like, it's like, he's, he just, he's just kind of there and like almost omnipresent. No one knows why he's there, but like, he's always stirring things up no matter where he goes. Um, yeah. And just and it like kind of causing up, madness. Yeah, well, and because I, I know that like when I was looking it up as to like, because I like I was like, man, that name is like a handful. But like I, the other mm. like name, I guess, or alias you could give him was like the man of many faces. And it was exactly yes. that. Like his whole premise was, you know, he would become the person's lover and, you know, make that person think that the other person was like being unfaithful or whatever. And then yep. that would cause the rift and he would just get a giggle out of that, essentially. Yep. Um. So, yeah. So, yeah. But yeah, you you definitely summed it up. Basically, he's just he's just a bad dude. <laughs> he's 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 basically like what you think of when you think of like well i always think of when i think of gods i think of like greek mythology mm-hmm. and people i i'm one of these people i will fully admit that people say like if a pantheon of gods were real what would you follow and for me it's a very close tie between like nordic mythology and greek mythology but i always lean back to i think i would follow greek mythology if that pantheon was real but those gods suck like oh they're there's almost terrible. nothing redeemable about any of them <laughs> none of them but it's like they're just n- neat i just think they're neat um but it's like yeah it, i mean it just kind of goes for i think that's very common and you give anyone any amount of power and they're gonna be just like the worst version of themselves imaginable well and like it's kind of just like it actually makes me kind of think ex- exactly like what you just said is like i think that's literally the premise of percy jackson i think i think that's literally what you just what you just <laughs> I think brought so, up yeah yeah <laughs> just like man why are these people they they just suck <laughs> but yeah the only exception that i can find is withers from baldur's gate he's oh. the he's the only dude who's just cool which yeah. spoilers for baldur's gate i apologize but um anyways so I wanted to kind of get into the to the topic. So what makes Persona so appealing? And I kind of wrote down some little freeform jot notes. But for me, and I didn't think of this comparison until I started really thinking about what makes Persona so interesting. And I'm like, why do I like Persona? Mm -hmm. Um, And it immediately reminded me like the first thing that popped in my brain was Pokemon. Because I'm thinking back to like playing old Pokemon games. And this is kind of a little far fetched, but like in my brain, it's a one to one comparison almost where like it just reminds me of playing the old school Pokemon games where it's just you start out on an adventure. There's a bunch of things you have no idea why you're there, what you're doing or who these people are. Um, But like everyone loves you. You're collecting these Pokemon. You're battling gyms like it it just kind of reminded me of that. And I think that's actually why I love it so much is because it just reminds me of that like old school game feeling where. There's a lot to do, but it's not overly complicated. Yeah, no, I absolutely agree with that. Like, like you could literally like like you kind of just said one for one comparison, like the compendium is your Pokedex. Yeah, literally. It's it's literally what it is. No, I think you kind of hit the nail on the head. And what I kind of found interesting about that point that you 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 made, too, is again, weirdly enough, because I'm playing because I played these backwards um, when you get to four and three. I realized that the instead of the whole aspect of asking the persona to basically give you give you their power or whatever else. And they became like you said, just it's the bubble sore you caught on route yeah. 12 or whatever. Um, and uh, but in four and three, you were just collecting them via shuffle time. And the things yeah. that you were fighting weren't even the persona. So if anything, I would actually argue that. They they definitely I'm not sure if the, the, the Pokemon is the is the influence or not, but they 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 in my opinion, that's definitely a uh an upgrade for sure from what they did. Like instead of fighting like some weird laughing table with what like a, a Commedia <laughs> dell'arte mask, 
you're uh you're instead actually facing the thing and the other thing is too is that instead of the you know the rng kind of aspect of oh you might get shuffle time and be able to get the persona that you're looking for you can actually you know face the thing you need and put the importance of oh okay i don't need that guy but i do need that guy yeah and 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 it's 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 great that you bring up shuffle time too because you like obviously you've played have you have you finished three at yes this point? old bud okay. 70, 79 hours later god um but so i played through probably if i had to i i, I didn't look up exactly how far i was in the story i like to play these games blind um but i was playing persona 4 a while ago and i put it on pause um just because i wanted to play something else at the time um but i got through about halfway i think through persona 4 golden and shuffle time was the weirdest thing to me and it's like it's one thing that i'm glad that they kind of got rid of but i also found it kind of a fascinating concept like it was just like this weird little like almost like slot machine yeah you're playing you're almost like going yeah yeah you're yeah you're literally just playing a gotcha pond basically like (laughs) and i found that like really weirdly it, it was like it gave the slot machine effect where it was almost like addictive where i'm just like ooh, like what am i getting like it was it was weird um but it's definitely something that i'm glad they got rid of in the long run because i i agree like facing the actual like personifications of the personas um the personas personas um i think is like such a good stylistic change in my opinion like it just makes the game feel a little bit more cohesive almost because i found that persona 4 almost felt just kind of random and kind of cobbled together Mm -hmm. like it just felt strange and i don't know if that's because of how long ago it was made like maybe it was just or or just the differences from four to five, but it just five felt just a little bit more cohesive in no, that sense. I absolutely agree. And I think that that's kind of what uh, like and again, not to rip off your reference, but like I find that it's a it's a very big difference between like, you know, you go back and you play like Pokemon Red and then you think back to like the first time you played Pokemon Stadium and how much yeah. that blew your mind. Yes. And and I think it's exactly like that because play uh, because all the Persona games before five were only supposed to be for like PSP or, you know, all the way back to like the PlayStation. I think believe the first one came out for the first PlayStation. It's just it's such a different style because and that was the other thing that kind of almost gave me a hard time getting through four was I had just played five, not even five. It was five Royale. So like, yeah, the newest of new amazing graphics on my you know my great great With gaming pc extra and everything 30 else. hours of, <laughs> yeah, of exactly. content from the original exactly and then you go back to the persona 4 which even the reload or the golden or whatever uh ended yeah. up still having the exact same graphics basically except they turned it you know i think into 720 versus whatever the heck it was on the psp and yeah it it I will be I will be honest if it wasn't for the fact of my love of Persona games I think I would have had a hard time getting through it. And you know what I'm actually kind of the opposite where oh. I found that I wish that I experienced Persona earlier and I played through because like I would love to experience like the original three and four like even four I would have loved to experience before I played five mm-hmm. because it's like five set this crazy golden standard for what I thought a JRPG should be. And now, like, if I play any other JRPG, I'm like, but it's not Persona 5. Yeah. And so I'm the exact that's like a way. big reason why I put down Persona 4 was because I'm just like, damn, like, it's just like it. it's just there's so many quality of life changes that just aren't there. Like, I, I wish that I could have experienced them in the in like the proper order, because five, I think, ruined the other ones for me (laughs) no i totally agree with you like a hundred percent like i feel as if i definitely like don't get me wrong i think the other aspect like further from loving the persona games and wanting to know more about them the story also slapped in the fourth one and even the third one like they like the stories were phenomenal and i think that's what also got them to hold their spot as great jrpgs even with the like you said kind of the persona 5 uh, golden standard that now all jrpgs forever will be held at least in my uh, <laughs> my opinion and yours yeah. be held against for oh, the yeah. rest of time um <laughs> because i'm the exact like i think i try i even tried to play like something i think i tried to play like the new octopath traveler when it came out and i was just like yeah i can't like i just i just don't care <laughs> yeah and and that's totally fair <laughs> but yeah no it's um 
it's very interesting to 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 think like that and i, and I like the way that you kind of brought up the whole like losing track of time like i i the only reason i knew 79 hours is just because i i think i checked like literally right before we hit record um <laughs> but no it's true you can sit there and just like like you just lose time like and especially because like like i'm a dad and you know i i work like you know a nine to five job in my regular yeah. life and everything else so you know all of a sudden like i look at my clock and i'm like oh no as if it's 1 a.m as oh if. no i gotta work in six hours <laughs> yeah, now <laughs> exactly exactly and that that does not really happen with any other game uh, and that just goes to show like how rich the game is and how rich the, the gameplay and story is for sure and i feel like part of that is because of and this kind of goes into like the gameplay loop that i think is so important to what makes the game so great is like because there's so many things to do and it's so unique in that there's a lot of like like it almost brings in like dating simulator like kind of vibes mm -hmm. to it with the social aspects so it's like you're almost like at times you're playing a visual novel um but then you, you're you playing your visual novel but then you can go and like go to a batting cage and just do these like ridiculous mini games but then you go into the metaverse and you're playing like a proper like dungeon crawler like you're almost playing like a roguelite but then you go into combat and it's like old school final fantasy or like pokemon fights and like it actually, you know, it, it actually really does remind me of Final Fantasy. It, it really, um, as soon as you said that, I was like, man, it really is like Final Fantasy. Man, like, I didn't think about that until just now, but I'm like, maybe that's why I love it. It's because it reminds me of old school Final Fantasy. Um, but it's just like, it's the gameplay loop is almost like addictive because depending on what mood you're in, you can literally do whatever you want. I mean, within the time restraints that mm -hmm. the game gives you. But like, if you feel like just doing dungeons or like just like kicking ass for a minute, you can just go into like in Persona 5, anyways. You can just go into, um, oh shoot, what's it called? Uh, mementos. Yeah. And you can just kick ass in there for a while. Yeah. Like, it's just, there's so many different things that the game gives you to do is, and, and I think that's why it's so easy to lose track of time and why it's so popular because it's just, it's like eight different games crammed into one, but somehow it doesn't feel disjointed. Like somehow everything fits together, which is almost like an incredible feat on its own. Well, and I think the the time the the time aspect, the kind of what you just said there is is what makes it kind of mesh so well together, too, because you can do all of those things, but you have to make a choice as to which of those things you're going to do. You can't do all mm -hmm. of them in the same day, which like I find like if you played something like, you know, like a Pokemon or something, you can go all the way from, you know, Pallet Town all the way to to Cerulean if you really want to. But like for persona you know you can either choose you got to hang out with this person and then that's going to take you to the nighttime and then the nighttime you can either like you said go to mementos but then once you leave mementos your day's done and that day is lost like you do not get that yep. day back so it almost kind of also has like a i guess a consequence to your to your actions which is also super interesting for a video game in my opinion because most of the time you know you can do whatever you want you know like you, you know gta 5 you can blow up the entire city but then as soon as you <laughs> as soon as you recover back in the hospital it's like it never happened <laughs> you yeah, know what i mean exactly um it's and it's so interesting that like there are very few games that i've played that have very hard time constraints of the story that i've actually enjoyed because usually that just like stresses me out and like if i feel stressed out when i'm playing a game usually i just put it down because i'm like listen like i work you know like nine hours a day and like when I get off to go play like a couple hours of video games in the evening, I don't need to be stressed. Yeah, out. no, you want to have so fun. Like, you want to relax. So like, yeah. But somehow like and I never really thought about it, but like the fact that there is a time constraint, like I almost don't even notice like you obviously notice it because it's, you know, five days until you have to do this. Mm -hmm. um, but like it doesn't feel stressful unless and I did make the mistake of like, again, I like to play these games blind. And so if you want to go into if you're playing Persona 5 and you want to go into the royal content, you need certain people's social. Yes, uh, things uh, to maxed. a certain level. Yeah. And I didn't know that. And I had I had two of them. So I was in like the last area or like the last bit. And there were two people that I didn't have maxed that I needed maxed. No. And I literally and I'm not joking. On the last day, I got the last person I needed to max. Nice. So I got into the. It was like, and it was because um, Buddy Dennis like came upstairs while I was playing and he's just like, oh yeah, like, have you done this? And I'm like, no, I'm like, I don't like that character. Like, I'm not hanging out with them. And he's like, yeah, you should probably do that. Yo, <laughs> Dennis like, did the exact same thing to me. 
He did oh, the exact. He, he was like, "Oh, by the way, when you play this, the two people, it doesn't matter when you do it, but you have to make sure by this date they had their max." And I'm like, "Oh, okay." Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> th- th- I don't know. Thankfully, I think by the at least the the gameplay, the way that I play, I guess, like maybe it's just because I like to keep everything balance so you know like i get everybody to five i get everybody to six type of thing like that's how i play the game like i know that's yeah kind of meticulous i guess it's just how my brain works but uh I, I'm, it, the, I'm the opposite actually oh, really? like i oh man i like i latch onto one person and i'm like they're gonna go to 10 and everyone else can suffer i'm like i literally don't care about anyone else i'm like ryuji's my boy and See, i'm gonna hang okay. out with him every See, day you, you were that <laughs> you were that kid that had his charmander at level 100 and everybody else was in like it's, the 50s at, yep. at uh, Victory Road, wasn't it? Yep, literally me, <laughs> Pokemon Emerald, every single time I would choose Trico, and I'm like in the, like I'm, he's level 100, and literally the rest of my party is in like the 40s. Yeah, and he and I get to the, the Elite whole thing. Four, I get to the Elite Four, and like literally the rest of my party is just like fodder so I can revive, revive. my tile <laughs> yeah, yeah. and just get him back out there. A hundred percent. That is exactly how fun, I play Pokemon. Well, funny enough, when I was a kid, I did that. And maybe that's why I don't do it Persona because like I looked back on how I played Pokemon and I was like, I probably so bad. shouldn't have done that. Like, and not to go completely <laughs> off topic, but like you can't play that way anymore in the Pokemon games. You just can't. No. <laughs> I tried that with uh, Pokemon Violet. I think I was playing yeah. and like I tried it and I did not do well. No, I had to take just... a while out to go grind because I'm like, oh, I can't have one favorite. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, but uh, no, but I don't. But it's totally very understand. much the same in uh, it's very much the same in Persona, actually, where like even like when you're fighting your personas, like you can't have just one. Well, until like late game when you start getting like the gods. ridiculous ones. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. But it's just like for the most part, it's like, OK, I need a balanced team. Like I need someone who's going to deal every element or like someone who resists this element so when i'm fighting this boss like i don't get absolutely pub stomped it is very meticulous but the mechanics are as hard as you kind of want them to be like you can go super deep just like and i'm gonna keep bringing up pokemon forever this is just a pokemon episode now (laughs) but like you can go as hard into the mechanics as you want and you can min max as much as you possibly Mm -hmm. want but you can also kind of be like me where it's very surface level just like okay like i know that i need psychic damage for this one so i'm gonna get a good psychic persona or whatever and you can kind of just like round out your team and just make it generally an all-rounder and you can still get through the game um but like you again like you can also go like super hard and like you can breed different personas with like different abilities and like you can go super hard and like i've been on the persona 5 subreddit and people go insane with builds like it's ridiculous and i wouldn't even have thought to play like that because it's just not how i really approach games but I think that's also another part of why it's just so good is because like it, it appeals to that tryhard crowd, but it also appeals to the plebs like me who just like to play it as a Ryuji dating simulator. So like, <laughs> yeah, no, totally. Were you the same like uh, that you 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 stayed away from the lovers arcana because you knew that Ryuji had a thing for her? Yeah, same. Oh, yeah. I did the exact yeah. same thing. I was like, you know what? Yeah. I'll go for Makoto. It's fine. Yeah, dude. Mako- <laughs> okay, so like on that, Makoto is best girl. Oh, 100%. Best girl, 100%. There's no like, there's no if anyone says it, argument. if anyone says the on is best girl, I'm like, you basic bitch. I've like, you have not experienced it. love. Man, everybody says that too. Like, they're just like, oh, it's like the it's the canon uh, uh, love I interest. And I'm like, a, I don't care. And I'm just like, no. bro, you're going to do your buddy Ryuji like that? Yeah, come on. You're not a good friend. <laughs> like, like I'm sorry, but like from day one, he made it very obvious. Like he was not hiding it. No. <laughs> so like, you know and what? It's... And honestly, the story between like I found that like the the chemistry you have with Anna versus the chemistry you have with Makota, like it's so much better with Makota. So much better. Oh yeah. It's like it and okay, and so this is where the game starts to get really weird playing as an adult because <laughs> you kind of <laughs> You you kind of get into a place where you're like, I'm in a romance with a teenager character. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And it just gets like, like, if you think about it too hard, it's really weird. But it's like, it's just, I, I don't really like, I don't want to dwell on that topic. But it's like, it, it is something that's in the back of my ma- mind too, constantly too, when I'm it's playing the, these games. It's the same argument when like you do the whole like, oh, who's your waifu or whatever. You know what I mean? It's yeah. the same kind of thing. Yeah. But like, I, I will say that that I think the saving grace to being an adult and thinking about that kind of uh, 
situation that you put yourself in is that the romances are fairly tame. Like nothing really like happens. Oh yeah. And realistically, if you think about it, if you want to go to the flip side, you can romance the teacher, but then you are putting yourself in the, okay, so you're making a, a high school student be in a relationship with your teacher. And yeah. then you get into that <laughs> argument. And now you're just like, well, I guess, and you know what? You have to romance somebody. It's an achievement. So let's just leave it at that. <laughs> yeah. And the fact that, you know what? I actually don't know. I don't know if I, I didn't get far enough in Persona 4 and I don't know Persona 3. Do they also have a teacher romance option? So in 3, they like super. So like the 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 hermit or whatever, Kana is actually. So like, I guess this one of the teachers actually has a persona of like on the weekends. She plays this online MMO that you play as the hermit arcana like to basically level that up and they they okay. they definitely like make it so that she's definitely into him or whatever but they never actually make it a romanceable option oh, um okay. and then for the fourth one i don't think that there was actually any at all because like the hero font cuz like usually like you you know like the the hero font is an older person but like that ended up being like your father figure in the game and yeah no so i don't think there was any in 4 no i don't believe so which is like, I found it so, it was like, I remember when it happened in Persona 5, I just like, I died laughing. And that's like what I love about this game is that like, it, it can just like make me absolutely split a gut. Like the writing is so funny and just like everything that happens is just ridiculous. Like it's, it's like an anime, like it's, it's like playing an anime where it's just like, these situations are insane. It's hilarious or like it does serious really well. It does sad really well. Like it does just emotions and writing like impeccably. And I love that. It's just like. It, it's it's such a unique thing, and I think it's a very uniquely Japanese thing to write, because, again, it does remind me of just like anime and manga, mm -hmm. like it kind of follows those same beats. Um, and I don't know where I was going with that point, but <laughs> like you're, you're like, I, I get what you're saying, though, like you're you're kind of talking about like the, the how it kind of hits the archetypes of like all the different anime genres and i and i think yeah. it definitely does that really well too we're kind of like what we were talking about where like you know they have the, the social links for the the uh the 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 slice of life fans you have the the fighting aspects that are more for your shonen there's the um you know completely kind of alternate universe that you're playing in which would you know fancy to the to the isekai fans and yeah you, you can kind of go all a whole bunch of different branches and this game i yeah, it pretty much hits all of them. Like even like you could even argue, I guess, that like it even kind of almost has like a horror esque kind of aspect to it, even because of the dark themes that it sometimes like tackles. Like, yeah, you know what I mean? Like, like, so you got the third one that's kind of like about like self-reflection, but like also like the 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 darkness of like suicide and everything else like that. Like the like to to literally call upon your powers in the third one, you have to shoot yourself in the face. Which is, I actually, I was wondering if they were even going to do that in the in the Reloaded, because, like, I heard about that vaguely, and I'm like, there's no way that's actually going to be done today, because, oh, like, a lot boy. of devs just, like, shy away oh, from, yeah. like, any of that, and I'm like, there's no way, and then I go and I watch the trailer, I'm like, oh, damn, they did it. Oh, yeah, well, because, like, and, like, it's so funny when, like, kind of when you think about, like, how far-fetched that some of these stories can go, because, like, like literally the first cutscene with the main character in the third in the third in the reload at least i can't speak for the original but in the in the reload or whatever literally the first thing the main one of the characters who already i guess knows that personas exists but the main character doesn't yet she drops her gun he then or if, if, sorry e evoker not gun and yeah I, I i was looking it up actually and i saw that i read the entire lore about that and i'm just like what is uh, all right yeah. it's interesting it's interesting yeah I'll give it exactly that. and then he picks it up off the ground puts it to his temple and just says the word persona and shoots himself in the face. And, what? and that is just how he discovers his powers. Like, and again, kind of going back to like, maybe it would have been better if I grew up with these games and went three, four, five instead of five, four, three, because in five, you know, they do the personification of ripping off the mask that they wear in society. And though it kind of had like a, I guess a, a, a pain to it it was nowhere near shooting yourself in the head. <laughs> it's not nearly as graphic. Like it's a very, it's a very good, it's very good symbolism, 
but like it's not it's not just outwardly like oh yeah this person is just unaliving themselves <laughs> well and, and, and i'm wondering if somebody decided that they went too hard in three so when four happened all they needed to see the things and use their power was like you know be true to themselves and wear sunglasses to see things and that would <laughs> and that's what i was gonna ask is because i i genuinely couldn't remember what they did in four yeah so four basically well and that's what the, the like i said so the third one you know basically the whole premise was is that you you had the gift because the, in the dark hour if instead of put in the dark hour which is like an extra hour between 12 and 1 in this in this subconscious multiverse type of thing that's basically if if you don't have the gift you spend this dark hour in a coffin standing there where you can see if you if you uh do have the gift which is also terrifying if you think about it yeah seriously um, and then once you know that you have the gift you then have to know somebody i guess or know where to get yourself an evoker and just trust that you can shoot yourself in the face and to discover that you have a persona deep within you <laughs> like how does that even like i <laughs> I, I got to play it for myself and I will play it for myself. It is really like, good. How, like, like, how I, like as, as much as like I make fun of it, it, it's really good. <laughs> like how does like the evokers are just because it was like, uh, I don't want to get too much into the story of it, but it was just like wild concept. <laughs> oh, no, it's crazy. <laughs> wild dude. concept. And, and then, like I said, it's just so funny how they took like a, a complete like 180 in number in four where like it was just like. Okay, so we're going to now more focus on like the whole being true to yourself. And then once you find out you are true to yourself, right. you're going to face your shadow self. And then yeah, that's and you how you get your to persona. tell yourself to fuck off. Yeah. And then you get your powers. <laughs> just like, yes. Well, it was that it was actually kind of the exact opposite if you think about it, because they had to go, yes, I am you and you are me. Oh, yeah. And then yeah, I am thou, true. thou art I, right? And so, right. so then. <laughs> <laughs> that I'll, okay cool now i have superpowers and then and then yeah and then the the fifth one was kind of like i said ripping off the mask that you know you have to wear in society sometimes to yeah. be accepted as a person and like it was kind of like okay so where do you where, where do you go from shooting yourself in the head to completely self discovery of being who you are being true to yourself to then ripping off the thing that you show like it's so interesting where like it the, is, the, and it, is it just it just goes to show the writing it's it's phenomenal yeah like and it's it's yeah it's 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 it, it's kind of very interesting like i said where like you talk about like the different themes that each of them kind of um tackle and how it goes from like kind of what you said to this funny comical like ryuji is just hilarious in five and then you know you go to the whole like, you know, you skip forward in that game where you're you're fake you're faking your murder, essentially. Yeah. To Oh man, the game gets so dark so fast. So dark. But <laughs> but it's just like, okay, so talking about all the games and like the differences between them. So I actually wonder if now that we're talking about it, um, because Persona 3 was it was well received, but it was still very niche and it was more like it wasn't as accessible to the Western world necessarily. Um, Persona 4 was a little bit more so, but then Persona 5 was, again, like the massive hit that we know it is. Um, and I wonder if because they kind of like softened the themes and made it more symbolic rather than like an outward gesture of, you know, shooting yourself in the head. Like, I wonder if that's what I wonder if that's an element um like just like the the evolution of writing to be a little bit more symbolic and a little bit more generalized i guess um like i wonder how much that went to making it more popular or more accessible well it definitely made it more relatable for sure like definitely like well because like <laughs> like not to say like obviously to be little like obviously people deal with depression they deal with suicide yes. and i'm sure me and you have been touched some way or another in our lives somehow arranged to that and mm -hmm. it's a serious thing to talk about, but it's also a really hard topic, I think, to focus on in a video game. And yes. and not to say, I, like I said, I, if I had to say anything about Persona 3, I think that they, not that they exactly titled it with grace, but it was almost kind of like you they used that desperation as a power. I'm not sure if that's the best way to put it, but that's the only way that I know how to describe it. I, th I think I know what you're saying. Is that I think I know what you're like saying. Like they they used the desperation that people you know feel in those maybe those situations and used it actually as your superpower, which you know I, 
kind it's of very powerful. It's very powerful if you think about it. But I think definitely in number five, I think everybody feels that way. Everybody feels like they have a mask that they have to wear at school, at work, in public, even at mm-hmm. home. Um, and I think that that was something really relatable when it came to Persona Five. And I think what it did really well too is that. I think each arcana or social link or whichever one you want to say, they all tackled a different aspect really, really well. Um, Mm -hmm. And I think that's what made it so powerful is that like, you know, maybe you weren't like a a track star or whatever else like Ryuji that had to deal with the social pressures of, of, you know, costing your team the championship or whatever. But like maybe... You know, you have a sibling like Makota does who feels that she has to be perfect at all times and can't make a mistake. And, you know, and like maybe you're the other way around, you know, and I think that because it had so many different ways to tackle that and the whole, I guess, personification of, you know, ripping off the mask and being who you truly are. And that's the power of your true persona was just as powerful as uh, of a message as three or four had, because Like, I think I would definitely say that three and five both had stronger messages in four, Um, because four was kind of like more of like the power of, you know, self-reflection and like the self-reflection like in media and like self love, and, and they kind of like focused on all that. And again, powerful stuff, important, obviously, Um, but it just I don't think it hit as hard and like kind of what you said. So I think it was kind of a mixture of how relatable it was. And also, yeah, it doesn't it, it also helped in, you know, nowadays it was on it got released on like every single platform versus just being on the ps uh the playstation and portable like which, several times <laughs> well and that too and like i don't know about you but like i don't think i actually knew anybody that had a psp did you have a psp because i didn't have one <laughs> i didn't have a psp but i did actually growing up i had a friend who had one um and i remember being very jealous because at the time that i got into god of war mm. um god of war chains of olympus had just come out on psp and i was mad because i couldn't play it and i was like hounding them to like let me buy chains of olympus and play it on their play on their psp <laughs> oh, god but but it's like i knew one person ever who owned one one person well and i, I think, don't know anyone else who ever owned one and i think that was the thing is, is that i think for whatever reason and kudos to nintendo but like whatever however they marketed the Game Boy and you know Advance SP whatever going on to yeah. the they did it correctly because I, I never and again maybe it's just because I wasn't a God of War fan or whatever else but like I never felt the need to need a PSP and that was the only time it's like there was one series that I happened to just be playing I mean like there were some games where I'm like ah this would be cool but it's like but I have a DS it's like what do I need anything else for? like and, yeah. I don't need another handheld system and it's just because like Nintendo just had like cornered that market and there was just like nothing anyone else could do to even touch that yeah and i think and i think that that was also a detriment because i fully believe that if back in the day uh, for whatever reason if i had a psp or whatever i absolutely would have been a fan of three and four for sure and then oh I, and yeah, then almost certainly. and then this is the other thing kind of brought in if we went to the opposite way i personally think that if i would have played it in the regular way that other people did where they played three four and then five I think five would have blew my mind even more. And five has already blown my mind. <laughs> well, so actually I've got one buddy, my buddy who introduced me to the persona series. Um, he, he did play. I want to say he started on four. Okay. Um, I want to say that he started on OG four, um, went back and like, I want to say that he emulated three, mm. um, and played it and then played five when it came out as I believe it came out either just before It was like sometime while I was in college and I remember he's playing it and he's like, dude, he's like, you have to play this game. He's like, this is like the best series ever. He's like, play Persona 5. And I'm like, I, it took me years to actually play it past that point, but I'm like, why would I start with the fifth one? And he's like, dude, he's like, trust me, there's no other way. (laughs) No, he's like, totally. He's like, five is the most polished of all of them. He's like the other ones a little rough around the edges. He's like, I enjoyed them as like, and I'm paraphrase this was so many years ago but i want to say that it was like the other ones like he enjoyed because he was younger and it's like when you're younger you don't necessarily like you're not as critical about games it's just kind of like can i waste my time on this if the answer is yes then i probably enjoyed it um and so i want to say it was kind of like that with persona 4 where it's just like it's a good game but it, it was kind of like a, a like a parlance of the times 
Um, but Persona 5, he's just like, no, this is the game everyone needs to play. Well, and I, and I think it, the funny part is, is that like kind of like it, and it made me think when you brought that up that like it took you years to play. What I think was a detriment was is that for the longest time I tried to get into anime like JRPGs or like anime um, related games over and over and ever over again. And every time I was disappointed, like I would yeah. try to play like a Naruto Ninja time. Store game or I would try to play like a. Like, like I'm a huge fan of Sword Art Online or whatever, and they came out with, like, a whole bunch of story, like, visual novel kind of games with, like, a little bit of a fighting aspect. And I thought to myself, oh, that's perfect. And I would try to get into it. And I'm just like, I hate this. Like, I do this not This is the enjoy only anime game I've ever played that wasn't based initially on an anime that I loved. <laughs> well, and th I think this is probably the first ever video game that made me want to watch the anime version. Right. And so that's actually an interesting point, too, that I totally forgot until just now is that there is an anime related to it, which is like, it's just an extra avenue. Like, I wonder if there are people who watch the Persona 5 anime and then are just like, oh, man, this is a game like I would love to play this game. Yeah, because honestly, like everyone that I know yeah. got into like watch the Persona 5 anime because they played the game and they're like, well, I need more Persona 5s. So they watched the anime. But I'd be interested if there are people who did the reverse. Way. That would be interesting, because as far as I know, I think you're right. I think I only know people that have watched it because they played the game. Um, that would be super interesting to think about. Uh, that's yeah, I don't know. I don't know. And speaking of so I just wanted to touch on. So there's two two things that I want to touch on. Sure. Um, now, one is actually I was just thinking about the graphics because this is actually something that kind of stopped me from getting into four a little bit is just like the the stylization of Oof. it. It's not that it's bad. Um, and it's like, I admit that it's like, it's charming, but I love Persona 5. Like Persona 5 is like my ideal, like stylized anime, cell shaded, like style. But then Persona 4 is like, it's like, kind of like chibi. You know what I mean? I know exactly what you mean. And it's like, it's too cutesy. Like, it's like, it's hard. It's kind of, it was kind of hard for me to take seriously. Which I feel bad saying because it's like, again, like I really enjoyed it while I was playing it and I will get back to it. But it's like, I just, I almost wish that they could just give it the Persona 5 treatment where they just like stretched everyone out a little bit and had it like not the chibi well, style. Well, like they looked like an actual person. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm yeah. with you on that because literally, dude, I'm not sure if you've played them. The first thing I thought of when I popped in Persona 4 and played it and then I saw the chibi versions, the first thing that popped in my head was Harvest Moon yes oh my god dude same <laughs> literally like i booted it up and i'm and I, like i got transported back to like i'm playing on my gamecube in my mom's yeah. basement on like our rca tv and i'm playing harvest moon yeah and like that's exact and like that's it's it's perfect for that like hey another game that has an amazing like slice slice of life aspect but it's like it, it is exactly that style it's it, like it's hilarious you bring that up i never would have thought of that but that is exactly what it is. That's exactly the feeling well, that I had. And this is the problem that I had with it, because like kind of what you just said, that the whole chibi kind of cutesy, you know, for Harvest Moon works because it's a cutesy like it's a super cute game. <laughs> yeah, it's a super it's cute not game. tackling major social issues <laughs> exactly. like Persona 4 is trying to. Like, it's just like I'm trying really hard to be sad that your dad is ditching you at home right now, but you look adorable. But you look like a Funko Pop, <laughs> yeah. and it's driving me crazy. <laughs> like, totally. It's, oh it's interesting, God. but like, I like, I think that it's it's interesting to me that like the stylization of all the games are so vastly different. Like, Persona Three has a very like blue and black color scheme. Mm. Um, Four has kind of like a very bright yellow color scheme. Five is like the bit like the the blacks and reds. Um. I think it's interesting that they're so like differently stylized, but they all have that kind of like pop art sort of style to them. That's so it's so in your face. It almost just like punches you through the screen. It's it's hard to ignore. No, I totally I totally agree with that. It it I, I'm not sure. And again, I'm sure that there is some guy's job is literally just to talk about, you know, what color palette we should go with for the game this time. And I'm sure that that <laughs> is somebody's job. And at least in my opinion, every time they nail it. And I'm not I'm sure. I'm calling it. I'm going to make this. I'm going to make this. Okay. So they've gone with basically primary colors so far. Yeah. The next one is going to be either green okay. or, and I'm calling it, the, it could be, it could be, it could be purple. It's either going to be Honestly, green based dude, or it's going to be purple. I feel, based. I feel as if purple would look real good. 
I'm, 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 I'm feeling purple. I'm feeling purple with you. Like, but I, I can see it going green 100%. I can see it definitely go now that you brought it up. I can see it going green, but I now I now I hope they go purple. It could, man, purple. That could be really cool. Well, and, and like, I feel not, like that would be a vibe. Well, and there's not a lot of information. And that's the interesting part, too, that you kind of just brought that up. That, so there's already like confirmation that six is happening. We already have that confirmation, but but nothing is out. We don't know anything. <laughs> nothing. So the only thing that we know for sure, and again, it's like basically nothing, is that I guess somebody, I guess, created like a fake, like a uh, teaser or whatever, where where they were saying that um, we were actually going to be in college this time instead of high school. And the mm. creator literally came out, was like, yeah, we're not leaving high school. So, <laughs> no, so we're in high school forever. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so this is like, we are high school musicking this bitch. We are here forever. Um, that's so funny. And I just, and that's literally the only confirmation we have, which honestly, that would have just been my natural assumption. So that's nothing. Yeah. Um, <laughs> literally every other game has been in high school. Why would they bother to shake up that formula? Like, I don't see a reason for them to change that at all. Well, and the other thing is too, is that like kind of going back to like, you know, the way like the slice of life aspect to it, I honestly think the best way to tackle the social links and everything else like that the the easier setting is in high school because if you think about it if, if you went to college and stuff like that your parents probably wouldn't be involved your teachers wouldn't be as involved like there's so many different things right like but like high school like all your friends are there the, the you know you have that there's because like every one of these ones also has the generic oh you you're the transfer student there's no such thing as a transfer student in college that's yeah. not a thing like <laughs> yeah if someone comes into your program and like like no one know like you wouldn't even who, notice like people yeah it's like <laughs> people could have come into the back of my class who didn't even go who d weren't even like at that school and i'm like yeah sure like who cares well and people do like, well, people why would i yeah, ever don't people do that in college isn't that like a thing yeah. you just go to like sit for the lecture lecture because it might be something you're interested in yeah apparently <laughs> it's something that people do in at least university i never did no, it because same. i couldn't be i couldn't be bothered oh, you, but man. like <laughs> It's like, I want to say that it's so off topic, but um, there's a YouTuber that I occasionally watch, uh, Michael Reeves. OK, um, I don't know if you've ever heard of I him, know. but it's like he does like crazy, wacky tech stuff. And like, apparently he learned basically everything that he knows. And I could be wrong about this, but I remember hearing it somewhere. He basically just like walked into universities and just walked into lectures and just started like taking notes. And that's how he like learned everything he knew about like engineering. <laughs> I mean... Like, if you're not doing any kind of practical lab or anything else, like, who's going to stop you? Really? Yeah. Like, there's no yeah. way a professor is going to fundamentals. Look, there's no way a professor is going to look at a classroom of like 300 people and know every single face. There's just no way <laughs> you don't belong. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Some things not like the other. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, it's just it's not happening. So, but anyway, yeah. back on topic. Anyways, uh, um, it's yeah, like it, it definitely uh, falls in a high school uh, aspect for the social links for sure. And w this is the other thing, too. So kind of going back to, like, the ideas of number six, I'm, I've am i been trying to think of the things that they could tackle. And I honestly feel as if that they this might be the first time that they might actually continue the thought aspect of the mask of society. The only reason yes. I, th I think that they're going to stick to that is, is because there's still so much more that they can explore on that topic. And it's already a winning combination you know and i feel like it's already like and i could be wrong about this because again i don't know persona 3 but like the concept of like persona 5 and just like everything about the metaverse that's a, that's established in persona 5 it's like it's really deep mm -hmm. like there, there's a lot of untapped potential there like i feel like there's so much that we don't know that like I didn't even really care about like the midnight channel in persona four. Like I, it's like, it was there. It's what I did. It's, it, it was cool, but it's not like, it's not a setting that I like eager to go back to. Mm -hmm. Whereas like, I feel like the metaverse that was presented in persona five, like I want to go back there. Like I want to, like, I want to explore that more. Well, and it's still open-ended too, because and I'm trying to remember four, but I'm, but I know for a fact, because I just finished three. So I know this for a fact that like, Tartarus, which is like the Persona 3 version of Mementos. Yeah. Um, it's gone. Like the yeah, whole premise I, of the third Yeah, like that. the whole premise of the third one is is that like you have saved the world. The dark hour doesn't exist anymore. You can't go back. But like as we all saw from the fifth one and everything else like that with the cutscene, like like you just said, there that can very much continue and keep going. Oh yeah. 
Um, now here's the question because I know that you're a Ryuji boy fan. <laughs> How pissed would you be if it was still Joker, but a completely new set of side characters? And so I was actually thinking about that. Um, like literally just now, I was like, would I even want it to be continued in the same like people? And I don't I, I don't think so. I think I would actually be pretty let down. Like you think their story the same... you think their stories are done and they're good the way they are? I think their stories are done and I would be happy with a cameo. Like very Ooh. like I'd be happy with even if it was like, you know what, even if it was something like, oh God, they could like start it playing as Joker, like from like Persona 5. And then like he could even like die passing it off to someone else. And then you would like and then you start playing as like if you had like I don't know, like a protege or like someone you just happened to run into in the metaverse or like someone who accidentally got sucked in or something. Okay. Like, I could see it being something like that. Well, be, well and because like, as I think it would be interesting, like, I, like kind of to, to piggyback on your idea is that like, yeah, like for whatever reason, Joker goes back to mementos. And as we know, people can wander in there if they want to, you know what I mean? Like they can just yeah. end up in there. And the new, you know, fool arcana joker wild card however you want to talk about them you know could witness the death like you just said and take up the mantle i i dude i call atlas man that could be call interesting. atlas that i'm could... <laughs> patent it now it's like and that's the only way that i would i think want it or like even if it was just like he's somewhere in the background somewhere like 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 he's like do you remember like jose or was it jose joe what was it from he's like in memento see so you, you like give him the stickers oh yeah i can't was it jose, I think it was jose. my brain's telling it was, me it jose. was something like that yeah like even if joker was something like that or like some of the characters from persona 5 like even if it was something like that i would be okay with they're that. kind of but like I, they're kind of like leaving it open for the next generation type of thing yeah they're, they're kind of like maintaining like memento so they're kind of like making sure like they're just continually cleaning up or something you know like there's no like save the world thing quite but they're just kind of like they still have access to it like they still go in there i mean like i i could see it being something like that but i really i want them to do a brand new story i don't even want them to like touch any of the characters that are existing like i feel like it needs to be something different yeah well that's what i found kind of interesting especially now playing the old personas after five because five was like oh we're gonna go see joker again but then when you play three and four you're kind of like all right, but their stories are over. So why are we going to continue with Joker? And it's kind of like, yeah. and, and I think you're right in a sense that I think it would take away from the game if we decided to continue off because Joker's, you know, his job's done. You know what I mean? Like he's, he's, he's done his job. He's, he's, you know, he's completed the compendium and saved the velvet room and saved Igor from the, the, the bad guy and everything else like that so like yeah i think you're right i think it, it but, needs to be but then also why would they leave it so that's, open-ended if they didn't intend the, to pick up on yeah. it like you've got me thinking about that now and i've never thought about that before <laughs> and it's just like why would they do that when the other games are very so specifically like no this is like a one and done story no i think like, i don't know why they would do I that i think you might be onto something then he might be passing the mantle on to somebody else i think because that would be the only thing that would make sense for them to be going to like a, a a a new story if they are if yeah. they are going to go the continuation route yeah i could see it but i almost don't you know you know the only thing that i want to see from persona 5 100 mm. is the music oh and i i believe i want to say i heard somewhere that the composer from persona 5 is doing persona 6 oh, God. Um, which is incredible because that soundtrack is one of three soundtracks that i actively like listen to like very often while i'm working because they just like they just get me through it's the persona 5 soundtrack uh the metroid prime soundtrack and the kotor soundtrack damn all really it's strong like, soundtracks those three i listen to all the time because they're just amazing soundtracks and they're just like it, it, there's something about them that just like it evokes such like a good emotion but it's like it's music that i can listen to endlessly oh no 100 percent. like i wake up to beneath the mask like that's my that's yes, my alarm music incredible <laughs> it, it's and it's just like there's something so special about the music too that it's like you get the same battle music all the time you get the same music while you're walking around you get the same music in cutscenes. you get the same like it's the same songs just like a couple different variations of each throughout the all the game 
and somehow they don't get boring. And that is that is skill. It is because like most soundtracks to games like if it's like a repetitive thing i'm like can you please turn this off like i don't need to hear this for the fourth time but then i'm listening to beneath the mask for the 104th time and i'm like i'm still bopping no i (laughs) totally agree dude totally agree yeah no i think i think and i again i wouldn't say the three and well actually funny enough so they they definitely um they so they actually used the same composer for the third one like they brought him in for back and you could definitely tell so okay. I, if you get a chance, I would just listen to the Persona 3 Reload um, soundtrack because the music is it's just as it's it, it definitely has the five vibe vibe for sure. You know what, though, thinking about it, though, I remember getting annoyed with the battle theme in four. And I don't know if it's the same composer, but I remember being like, OK, like this is this is a bit much. <laughs> <laughs> Overall, I think that like <laughs> we, we talked about a lot Mm. and we derailed maybe a little bit but i mean like i think the thing that makes the persona series so or at least persona 5 in my experience makes it so like accessible is how just like absolutely amazingly they did all of these parts like without the music the writing the story like the little mini games the weird slice of life things all of the companions like all of this otherworldly nonsense like all of these things together that shouldn't make any sense just works so well i think it's like it's it's almost like lightning in a bottle like i don't know how they're going to capture that again but i i really hope that they do i i have hopes that persona 6 is going to be just as amazing no i definitely agree and uh ten this thank you again for having me on i really do appreciate it and i just have Absolutely. one question hell yeah. can i say it you can say it he'll lure you to death in the next one <laughs> and wait one sec oh god oh no where can we find you oh yes you can find me at rival x reviews on twitter instagram all the socials um i'm there i'm active i try to be active on all of them so if you have any questions or you want to check me out i'm also on uh rival x reviews obviously my podcast that we talked about earlier is on every podcast uh platform that you can you can find out there and this has been Lord to Death. Uh, you can find me online on all your socials, on all your podcast websites at Lord to Death. Uh, if you have any questions or comments or you want to be a guest, you have any topics that you want me to talk about, you can email me at Lord to Death at gmail.com. Uh, once again, thank you so much, DJ, for coming on. It was a pleasure talking to you. And I'm going to let you. I'm so sorry. I, 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 I took it away from you. I'm going to let you sign this one off. All right. He'll lure you to death in the next one.